investigation is underway after a cargo ship hit a Baltimore bridge, causing it to plummet into the river. I'm Rebecca Castor in Baltimore County with the latest developments coming up. There's a lot of energy and excitement here in downtown, and the city is transforming for the NFL draft as we are about a month away from the event, but this is not the only place where you'll find the action. How the city is showcasing businesses, including those that are minority-owned. It's a major milestone. A World War II vet is turning 100, and Fox 2 was on hand for the celebration. Working for you. Fox 2 News at 5. Now. Well, we could see some stormy weather across Metro Detroit over the next few hours. And we aren't expecting widespread severe weather, but some spots could see some power outages. Let's check in now with Richard Luterman for our first look at the forecast. Hey there, Taryn and Roop. Yeah, we had the rain this morning. That's long gone, but now it's a line of storms quickly racing across mid-Michigan, and it's this line that's going to progress off to the east over the next few hours, bringing perhaps some gusty winds in spots. You can see where the action is right now in and around Jackson, also in and around Lansing right now, but it is making progress to the east. So between 530 and 930, just keep your eyes to the sky. We'll be watching it here at the Fox 2 Weather Authority. But again, gusty winds, the main threat. Take a look at the numbers right now. 57 for us, 53 in Lansing. It is cooler on the backside, 49 in Grand Rapids. Eventually, we get down to 38, and then you'll see what's coming up next. The bit cooler weather for Wednesday and Thursday. Saturday brings some more showers likely to the area. It's Easter Sunday looking dry right now. Remember, always get the latest forecast check the radar right there for you on the fox 2 weather app you can download it for free anytime in the app store or in google play taryn we'll see you in 10. all right thanks rich a royal oak man now facing criminal charges after an hours long standoff with police yesterday jonathan mccall was Here, arraigned moments ago on charges of domestic assault and assault and battery his bond set at fifty thousand dollars police were called to a home on whitcomb street around five monday afternoon they moved in around 10 o'clock last night. Police forced to use their taser to take McCall into custody. McCall suffered minor injuries, but no one else in the home was hurt. Weapons, ammo, night vision goggles, and a tactical vest were taken from the home. But this isn't the first time Fox 2 has done a story about McCall. What may have contributed to this incident is coming up at 6. Well, a cargo ship slams into the Francis Scott Key Bridge on the Baltimore Harbor, causing it to collapse right away. Several vehicles fell into the water after the impact of the crash. Maryland officers say the bridge collapse caused by a cargo ship appears to be an accident and it may have resulted from a power issue. Fox's Rebecca Castor has more on this massive search and rescue operation happening right now. We are Maryland tough and we are Baltimore strong. Emergency crews desperately searching for victims near Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge on Tuesday. It comes hours after a cargo ship struck one of the bridge's support beams, causing parts of the structure to snap and plummet into the Patapsico River. President Biden says the incident does not appear to be intentional. We're going to send all the federal resources they need as we respond to this emergency. And we're going to rebuild that port together. Officials believe those still missing include construction workers who were filling potholes at the time. Maryland Governor Wes Moore says moments before the crash, the ship's crew reported losing power. That Mayday call gave authorities the time to stop the flow of traffic both ways. But it's still unclear how many, if any, cars plummeted into the water. These people are heroes. They saved lives last night. They saved lives last night. Meanwhile, transportation officials say the bridge collapse is expected to cause major disruptions to trade and traffic in the Baltimore Harbor, considered a major route for shipping containers and cruise liners. Certainly environmental uh, considerations are a priority and uh, so is uh, traffic addressing the needs of those that were impacted. That's the focus. The National Transportation Safety Board says it's standing by as search and rescue remains the focus right now, but they will lead the investigation into what happened. In Baltimore County, Maryland, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. The Michigan Wolverines hope to make another March Madness run, and today they're introducing the man they believe will help lead them there. Fox News' Jennifer Hammond joins us live with more on what we know about the new head coach, Dusty May. By the way, that's a great coach's name. Right? <laughs> it's a great name. It's going to work out well for the May's Rage. The fact that he was an assistant at Eastern Michigan 20 years ago and his son was actually born in Ann Arbor definitely make him a perfect fit, but ultimately it was his tournament pedigree that earned him the job. As the winningest coach in Florida Atlantic history, that included 
a trip to the Final Four just one year ago. Now, May arrived in Ann Arbor on Monday, and he was officially introduced today at noon as the winningest coach in Florida Atlantic history. He has guided the Owls to six consecutive winning seasons, including back-to-back -back tournament appearances and in that Final Four, as I mentioned. May cut his, has his work cut out for him in Ann Arbor, but he's ready to dig in and do everything in his power to return Michigan to the status it one, once had playing for national championships. I will represent this program with class and dignity and, and something that, that is, is we're never going to waver, waver from. We have a goal to develop young people and compete for championships and, and that goal will never change. But this is one place that everywhere you go, and, and I didn't know it until I lived in this state down the street, the, the, the pride, respect, and admiration for, for that block M, for the brand of Michigan. Uh, I've, I've never been at another university that had as much pride in, as every alum, student, whoever I come across has in this place. And May is a native of the Midwest. He was born in Peoria, Illinois. He went to Indiana. He actually worked for head coach Bob Knight. So he has certainly got Big Ten in his blood. We'll have much more when we see you later on in sports. For now, Root, back to you. All right, welcome to town. Dusty Mays. Yeah, well, right. May, Mays, Mays and Blue. Mays and May. Blue. Yeah, there's a lot so going on a there. A match made in championships. Of course, many U of M people are hoping for that. Yes. Uh, you know, we're just 30 days away now from the NFL draft being right here in downtown Detroit. Tens of thousands of people are expected to visit the city and local businesses and organizations are making sure they are ready. Fox 2's Brandon Hudson shows us the improvements underway. We know this will be the central location for the NFL draft next month. The light poles are already decorated. The stage will be constructed over at Campus Marshes Park. The street closures will start on Friday, and much of this area behind me will be walkable. But this is not the only imprint for this large outdoor event. We know that there will be several spaces in the city that will showcase businesses, including minority-owned businesses. While it may be overcast on this day, in about a month, the golden opportunity will shine on numerous locally owned businesses in Detroit. As city crews work on welcoming the NFL draft to downtown, shops like All Things Marketplace are preparing for the influx of people expected in the city. We're not in the official footprint, but there's a lot of things going on, and this is going to be a destination where people can come and shop local businesses. Jennifer Crawford Williams owns All Things Marketplace, which sells a bunch of Detroit-based items, including licensed sports gear. Jennifer is teaming up with other organizations for a block party in Corktown on draft weekend, similar to a party they threw last year. Small businesses are the backbone to the community. In Detroit, the ecosystem is amazing, and we really want to highlight the best of the pe best so people can come back vacation here shop here and become a destination for a lot of business for a lot of people to come out several months ago Detroit's NFL draft committee announced one of its partnerships with the Metro Detroit Black Business Alliance the goal is to give minority owned businesses a higher profile during one of the NFL's biggest events and that was a priority for us from the very beginning when we started to talk to the NFL as well as you know the planning process and so to have those local business and minority opportunities is critically important. District 78, a restaurant which opened in downtown about a year ago, continues to make plans to accommodate the larger crowds. For us at District 78, it's our chance to really show Detroit what Detroit hospitality is. And that's showing people to come out and have a great time, uh, good food, great service, so they can keep coming back. You can go a lot of places and get a great meal, but where can you go and really get a memorable experience? And that's what we deliver here at District 78. Again, those street closures will start on Friday, March 29th. For a full list of what will be closed, you can check our website, fox2detroit.com. The closures won't end until May 7th, so about a week after the draft. Now, if you need anything related to the draft and how to get down here and participate in some of these activities, this is where you get your phone. Download the NFL One Pass, and you can get access to a lot of the events over at Hart Plaza. In downtown Detroit, I'm Brandon Hudson, Fox 2 News.